Guys, are you ready for the ultimate showdown this weekend at UFC 298? Join me in the action by leaving your picks for the fights in the comments below. I have teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook, and right now, new customers get a no-sweat bet. You can get a bonus bet back in the amount of your original bet if your pick doesn't hit. Minimum deposit, $5. Sign up using my promo code SUNNEN. And DraftKings has something for existing customers as well. All customers get SGP insurance every day. Get a bonus bet back if one leg of your SGP bet loses. Minimum number of legs required and max bet vary. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. New customers, use my promo code SUNNEN and you get a no sweat bet. So click on the link below and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Dana White will make the announcement of the main event for UFC 300. He's going to do it this Saturday. The post-fight press conference right after Taporia and Volkanovski handle their business. Now, bravo to Dana, right? You, you have to be such a good promoter to get somebody right in front of their face. I mean, really, when, when, when everybody's watching and everybody's looking and you can still get him and he's got me, he's got me. I mean, th this is incredible. He's never done a fight like this. We as a community have never been on the edge of our seat more for a fight announcement ever than this. And there are so many things that are out of place in terms of what normally would happen. So then you get the smart guys in the room that are historians like, your, like myself. Why well, you just got a really good memory? You could go to Google or you could go to jail. Then I'm going to be able to look at, well, here's how this was done before, so I can guess that this is what's going to be done in the future. Then I get to look like the smart guy. There are so many things about this that have never been done. Dangling a main event in front of us has not been done. Giving us ingredients of the main event, an ingredient being you can't handle it. It's so big. An ingredient being this is jaw-dropping. Just for example, like, th those are really hard in your final recipe. Not to mention, we've excluded a number of people. Now, are those true, right? See, when you go down Conspiracy Road, you're judging every facial expression you can. You're also judging the words. Dana says it won't be Conor McGregor, but does that mean it won't be Conor McGregor? Well, if we are going off of history, yeah. Yeah, I can't really remember a time that Dana said it won't be something. And then comes back and goes, ta-da, it's a something. I, I can't remember that. So if I'm trying to guess what it's going to be that's really big, of course I'm going to start with the sport's biggest stars. But before I even get to a fight, let's just get to a guy. Red Panty Knight still wins the day. And there's Connor, and he's available, and everything's getting weird around that. I mean, absolutely everything about that is weird. From Connor announcing a fight that apparently is not happening on the date that he said it's going to happen, to Connor announcing he's going to box Manny Pacquiao, like everything around it doesn't make sense. Dana had done a piece today. He said it's it's really tough when McGregor has got so much money sitting and negotiating with a guy. It's a different spot. And that's a head scratcher to me because they have a contract. There is nothing to negotiate. There is no conversation to be had back and forth. We're going to turn to the file cabinet. Pull out a form that we signed two years ago, right? I and mean, it's one of those things. So if it's not Connor, and it would be hard to beat Connor, because I personally cannot accept there would be a non-title fight. I cannot believe that it would be a non-title fight. I cannot believe a policy within the UFC, which is title fights, trump everything else, and you've got the girls fight on there. So if you bring in a non-title fight, I mean, there's a, just a number of reasons that I have a hard time believing that that's the case. And that would mean that you're putting Connor against Islam or Connor against Leon if, in fact, you're using Connor instead of made of that spot. These, these are too hard for me to believe. So I would then defer right on down. And number two in line is a real toss up. The sport's second biggest star is a real toss up between Izzy and Sugar Sean. Sugar Sean is booked. Let's go back to Izzy. If you're going to use Izzy, who are you going to put him against? And if we're following Chael's math that it has to be a title fight, then the answer is Drick is Duplessis. I know for sure that fight was offered. I also know that Eugene Berryman says he's getting Izzy ready. 
in case a short notice fight comes up. But said he's going to need another month just to be in the stride and another month and a half after that to be pre-layoff Izzy. Okay. Drika says, I'm not doing the fight. I want to fight him at UFC Africa. I think it'll be a bigger fight than 300. I'm quoting right now. So if I'm to take those guys at their word, which I'm sort of left with, fine. I then do have to look at the store's big, uh, second biggest star outside of McGregor, which is Adesanya. And I have to understand that he is a versatile player. And he could still be at play opposite the only guy that asked for the spot. The only realistic and meaningful athlete on the entire roster of 764 that asked for the spot happens to be a champion. He happens to be named Alec Pereira. So is there a chance that Pereira is going to step in against Izzy at 205 pounds? Would that meet the criteria of jaw-dropping and something you couldn't handle? No, of course not. You've handled it how many times now? Six, seven, eight? So what are you going to do? Now, when I talk about things are out of order, when I talk about things that we've never seen, and a great job by Dana in getting us all, Dana even mentioned at a press conference, he started to lay his card out, but he did it from bottom up. Dana at a press conference announced what the first fight of the night would be. There's never been a time in the UFC, and it's, even if you're a smart mark and you count... UFC 36 and a half. There's never been a time when the first fight of the night was announced at a press conference. So we start jumping around going, okay, was the point there to show how strong the card was? Or is it to give you a little bit of room in case it doesn't come up? Like we, don't, we don't know what to make of it. It's never happened before. Now the final ingredient you will have an answer on Saturday night at the post-fight press conference. So, that would lead one to believe that it's done, that a deal is in place. And you can tell a friend, tell a phone, or tell a fighter. The word is going to get out. There is nobody in this sport who can keep a secret. That includes Dana's inner circle and office. If you were on the second floor of the UFC with a meaningful amount of people, it won't get out of that office. Somebody will tell somebody. It just, it won't get out. But Dana must have a level of confidence that he can either, between now and press conference, secure a match that he doesn't currently have or that he can keep it quiet. It's a fascinating subject. I got to tell you, I've never really had more fun doing this. And I don't believe that we can have a real off-the-wall fight. The return of St. Pierre, the return of Nurmagomedov. I don't believe we will do anything with anybody that is outside the predetermined request set forth by USADA, who I know is not even here. Please don't think you need to give me a lesson. But I don't personally believe they will do anything that was outside of the request of USADA when USADA was here. Which means you're not going to gather from anybody that's not in the pool. So I just don't think we're going to have one of those epic comeback moments. I know I hear lots of speculation it's going to be Lesnar. Lots of speculation that it's going to be Ronda. I'm much more comfortable in telling you guys what it's not going to be. I'm much more tell comfortable in telling you fights it's not going to be. And I could even break down why. But in a broad stroke, and to speed things up, they have to be in compliance. Now, that is an extremely arguable claim I just made. But USADA has made it very clear that that is their belief in what they would like. And I know when that torch was passed, the comment was made. We're not going to choose to fight you, and we're not conceding that we agree with you in that interpretation, but we are going to follow the interpretation. It specifically had to do with Conor McGregor, I'm well aware, but I'm still spitballing with you. Because there's a big surprise coming. There is. I just don't know what it could be. I don't know what direction to look in. It feels as though whatever the announcement is, is something that couldn't happen at 299 and shouldn't happen at 301. It's got to be a unique 
I'm confident in telling you it's somebody in the pool. I am most confident, absolute most confident, in telling you it's going to be for a title. But none of that is evidence that I have. None of that I can prove. And how we're going to keep that a secret from now until Saturday, that will be, of all these unprecedented moves, that will be the most unprecedented.